This week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be hearing new music from the Zombies, the BBC radio sessions. And the latest album from Jeff Beck, Loud Hailer. Welcome to Music Worth Buying, everybody. My name is Robert Kinsler, and I'm a music writer and a musician. My name's TJR. I'm a musician and a music writer. Now I'm going to kick things off with a band I've talked about a few times over the years, mm -hmm, The yes. Zombies. And this is called The BBC Radio Sessions. Now what this is, is this is a two uh, CD, I have it on audio CD obviously, two disc set that basically collects all of the British band's uh, recordings that were ever done on the BBC uh, broadcast recordings. Mm -hmm. Now I think a lot of people are going to be familiar with The Beatles BBC, I think that's been actually Love two collections. Yeah, two I collections. think there's been yeah. two collections. This, the zombie, sadly, some of the recordings, I guess, are lost through time. They, nobody else copies. Mm -hmm. But all the ones from all the different sources that they found have been gathered here. And this is a revelation. For one thing, you know, just recordings done live in the early 1960s on British radio are just fun. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see, you know, the, the, the personality of the band members. <clears throat> excuse me, comes through. And this is just a really fun, mm -hmm. fun recording. And, you know, what I thought we'd do is it, it, it features lots of bands that they wrote, a lot of songs that the band wrote, a mm -hmm. lot of songs that they covered, uh, little interview segments. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a blast to listen to the whole thing. But why don't we do this? Why don't we listen to um, She's Not There, which is a song most people yeah. are going to know. But this is off one of their first uh, live recordings they did on the BBC, as they better mm -hmm. known as the B, but I guess mm -hmm. is what they call it in England. Yeah. And let's listen to a little bit of that so you can get the flavor of what they sounded okay. like live in the radio studio there. Sure. Many people cried, but it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her. She's not there. Now, there's something I want to say, but before I do, I want you to actually kind of share a little bit about how this... Go ahead and read right yeah, now. Don't yeah. worry about it. Oh, well, but yeah. Just about how this track yeah. was found. The, you know? They say here, and, and the liner notes in here are amazing in this, uh, in this collection, the Zombies' earliest session at the Beeb was preserved by an associate of the band in an offline reel-to-reel -reel recording. It's That's going to sound as sharp as a studio recording. Mm -hmm. the, both sides of their debut single are featured. She's not there, and you make me feel good. So... Um, but it, it's so amazing. That's what I mean. They've they've gone through and found different sources to try to yeah. collect all these songs. So know. much has been lost to time. So much has been lost to time. Yeah. Offline recording. Can you explain a little bit what that means for people who may not be familiar? You know what I'm what I'm guessing is either they had a real real recording. They held it up to the radio. I mean, I I don't even know. Or maybe mm -hmm. maybe it in could the, be that crude. Yeah, it could be it could be that crude. I'm yeah. I'm thinking. I mean, when you go through the liner notes, and mm -hmm. I don't recall, but I'm guessing it could be like that because. But they've done an amazing job of cleaning these recordings yeah. up. They they're very listenable. I mean, I, I played the both CDs all the way through and just enjoyed it thoroughly. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised to find out that that is exactly what happened. A microphone mm -hmm. up to the radio while yeah. it's being broadcast because I can hear what sounds like little. Like bits of like like maybe static or no yeah. air, and you're talking radio back in the '60s, yeah. probably AM radio, AM radio, AM back radio, in the, yeah. 64, very era. low fi yeah, very you know thin sounding, and that being said, I'm amazed that this sounds as clear and as as the, and, and I'm sure yeah they cleaned it up digitally, but I'm seeing the the quality of the performance, the quality oh, of the yeah. vocals, the quality you know of everything. Uh, that it sounds this good to yeah. me is amazing. Um, you know, like I said, I was familiar, of course, with the BBC collections of mm -hmm. the Beatles, live mm -hmm. at the BBC, and um, it's it occurs to me, did America, did we have anything equivalent to live at the BBC like this, yeah. where you had these famous music artists, or you know, or and at coming the time, in regularly, too. up and coming, coming in regularly mm -hmm. on the radio and performing live? I don't know if we had anything like I that think, in America. I think there was some kind of, and I, and I have read it before. You probably have too. That I think there was some requirement from the radio to like feature the arts or something, so they would have orchestras on there, or they would have bands on there. And I don't think America had yeah, anything had comparable to that. Yeah, and yeah. that's why this happened in, yeah. in, in, in England. And, and, it, and it's great because, you know, the bands could come in there, they could, like, unveil new material. Maybe, um, you know, they could play a song a few times so you'd get different versions of it. I mean, it's it's very cool. And on this, I mean, it, it is just a... And 
there's so many songs, but they cover like Burt Bacharach on here. They cover Carol King and and Jerry Goffin on here. I mean, they, there's so much they do on here. They cover all blue stuff. They do and they do a lot of original mm -hmm. songs. And uh, it's just great to hear the band kind of how they progressed. You know, and same being true of the Beatles and what they did on the BBC yeah. as well too. But it's and it's neat because they're in their live and the and it there's just a, a certain energy about a band going in and playing live. Yeah. You know, is and it, also it you know they had to you had to know your stuff. You had to yeah. prove that you could you could live up to the expectations of your record because mm -hmm. there are so many ways you can fix things on a record mm -hmm. and create performances that can only be done in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, are you going to be able to play this? And even if you can't do it exactly like the record because you had a lot of overdubs mm -hmm. that you couldn't do live with maybe three or four people, can you still pull off the song exactly. well enough? And yeah. I keep thinking to myself, it's too bad we didn't have that in America. I know. And uh, and it's too bad we don't have something like this now. Yeah, it is. It's really unfortunate. I guess yeah. we do have an equivalent sort of. I should take that back because yeah. you know, like satellite um, radio. Maybe, well, yeah, you know. but but also uh, streaming services like mm -hmm. Spotify mm -hmm. have things like you know. Spotify sessions now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they have live, special, exclusive live performances. We do have that, and I believe Title does similar things mm -hmm. too. So we do have it in a well, way. This does come in a standard jewel case, although there are two CDs. One's in the player. We were just playing it, and then you know you can see that there. Mm -hmm. Neat pictures of the bands back in the day. Mm -hmm. These sessions were done in the early '60s, and and uh, just a very beautiful booklet. And uh, it doesn't have lyrics, but it does have detailed liner notes on each of the sessions as much yeah. information as I have and it's and it's just very exciting and you know what I thought we'd do is is uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna play is the second song so let's we'll mm -hmm. break here I'll play it for you and then we'll talk about sure. it on the other side of the break right. after people can listen to a little bit of it we'll be right back <laughs> And that's a little bit of if It Don't Work Out, which mm -hmm. is a original song that Rod Argent of the band wrote. And I guess apparently it was written as a single for Dusty Springfield. And it was only released, the Zombies version was only released after they had broken up in mm -hmm. 1969. You know, they broke up, I think, even before the release of Odyssey and Oracle. Yeah, they did. I think, yeah, Odyssey and Oracle tragic released. story. I think if they had stayed together another year or two, maybe their, their career, career would be, you know, have even gone up a lot better. Yeah. But anyway... Um, but again, this was an off-air recording. I assume that means somebody stuck a microphone up by the radio speaker when when it was being broadcast. And amazing you know? that it sounds yeah. this good today. Because the yeah. Zombies didn't really release all that much music in the mm -hmm. '60s. Because some of these uh, songs, like I said, a lot of them are covers. They I don't think they ever came out on any of their studio albums. Yeah. So it's great to get it. I should mention here, you know, um, but while we were in between, of course, when we shoot this, generally speaking, I pull up the tracks on Tidal or Spotify and then just play them, you know, through a Bluetooth speaker and we listen. In this case, we couldn't find this album on either service, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so we just played the actual real CD, which you right, have. Right. And so um, I, I guess this is not an easy album to get. Yeah, I, I, I guess not, but I know you can it's buy it on release. Amazon. I know you can get it on, yeah. on Amazon, and, it's, and it is issued by a major label, so it is available. Like, there's something yeah. to point that out. Yeah, and hopefully, and I know the zombies are doing, uh, around the time that... That the, we're going to air this episode, the mm -hmm. zombies are on tour, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so hopefully they'll be selling it at their shows too. I know I'm going to be seeing them uh, late the summer mm -hmm. of 2016, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing them again. I, I've been blown away by their performances every cool. time. And what did you bring in today? I'm bringing in here an album, uh, the latest album by Jeff Beck, Loud Hailer. And I talked about this album, I was so excited about this album, I talked about it first on my own channel mm -hmm. and did a review of it. Um, and I did mention in my, and you might be thinking, well, why are you bringing it here? <laughs> well, because I wanted Robert to hear it, uh -huh. and and I wanted to get his reaction, and that's part of what the show is about. This, of course, is Jeff Beck's first album in about I think six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been well worth the wait. Um, it's eleven tracks. Uh, none of the tracks are filler. Um, this um, album, it is. How shall I say? Jeff Beck has gone in a lot of different directions, mm -hmm. of course. Certainly. But yeah. here, he's just sticking with the rock. He's sticking with rock songs with tight structures, you know, standard, you know, three to four minutes long, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, all throughout, he's not afraid to be a guitar hero. Mm -hmm. His guitar is just an enormous presence. But 
The main thing about this album is the collaboration that's going on with this album. Um, he's working with two, uh, uh, with two, with, with another. I, I, sh I shouldn't say two. He's working with a a, a, a group called uh, Bones, okay. which is these these two uh, two girls, two, two young ladies. I don't want to say girls, two young ladies, um, guitarists and lead vocalists. And I'm going to get into talk about them in a moment. Okay. First, let's just listen to a track here, and this track is called Right Now. Okay. Here we go. Right now, right now. Don't know what they want, but they want it right now. Don't know what it is, but they want it right now. Yeah, they want it right now. You know, with this song, you know, it, it sounds very contemporary. If you hadn't told me it was Jeff Beck, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily assume, but although he's always been a chameleon, I mean, that's one of the mm -hmm. great things about Jeff Beck, let's say compared to like an Alvin Lee or Jimmy Page, mm -hmm. the other guitarists of, that came up of, in his era, he was always kind of different. I think mm -hmm. that's why he's maybe a little less famous than mm -hmm. them. But I really like this, the fact that he's able to collaborate with other musicians, do something very contemporary. The, the lyrics of this song are just great. It, it's so much what's going on on the popular culture right now about people being famous for nothing. I mean, it's like, you know, you can invent a cure for cancer and nobody knows your name. You're Kim Kardashian. It's hard to pick on anybody by their name. Yeah. And basically, you're famous for nothing or you're famous for something that you shouldn't be famous for. Famous for being famous. Yeah, famous for being famous or, you know, yeah. you know, or, and before that it was Paris Hilton. And fortunately, these people, they will fade away. But it, it's just very sad. I mean, you, you go up to a lot of a lot of people, you ask them who Buzz Aldrin is, you know, the surviving guy from Apollo 11 that walked on the moon. They're probably not even going to know who he is, but everybody knows, you know, the Helen Jersey Kim, Shore yeah, yeah. cast. I mean, yeah, it, it's just, it's, but this, but getting back to the music, this yeah. is just great. And I'm looking forward to hearing other yeah. songs off off Loud Hailer. I mean, this is great. Uh, yeah, this song is all about what I refer to as generation, the instant gratification generation. Yeah, um, yeah and, and something I will say, this is, this song is very self-righteous, mm -hmm. but it works. Normally mm -hmm. I'm turned off by self-righteousness in music. In heavy rock, it seems to work a lot better than mm -hmm. a lot of other genres. Mm -hmm. I think it where self-righteousness works well in rap too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it works well in heavy rock, rock because they're such a, they can be such aggressive forms of music. Mm -hmm. And um, once again, Jeff Peck sticking to just very tightly structured rock songs, um, and this is very much a message album. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, you know when you do a, a message album or message music. Uh -huh. The one thing that people always forget about sometimes is you still have an obligation to write a great song. Right. The message is not enough. You have to have a great song. Right. And this album achieves that. Even if you're not aware of what the lyrics are about or don't pay attention mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. you can still groove to how exciting the music is to listen to. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Okay. Um, now, this comes in a mini vinyl gatefold. Here's front and back. Here's the interior. And there's Jeff Beck with his two collaborators here, right. Rosie Bones and Carmen Vandenberg. Um, and there's a great booklet. I love the booklet. I think mm -hmm. the booklet is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the booklet um, features, you know, each lyric is themed in a certain way uh -huh. with with uh, with graphics, and then of course the lyrics are for the most part very easy to read. There are some uh -huh. photos, of course, very as cool well. Booklet, yeah, but I, I love very, the booklet. Very it's nice. great to look yeah. at while you're listening. It's nice when they put that kind of effort yeah. in, into the the artwork and the other parts of the. I'm usually the, the pleased if I can just read packaging. it. Yeah. It's not so tiny I can't read it. Right. But I'm pleased that I can read it. I'm pleased that artistically, what they put in with it works really mm -hmm. well. It, mm -hmm. It's all very well themed. I like that a cool. lot. So we're going to check out another track, and. Um, We'll see what you think of this one. Okay, go. sounds good. I'm not afraid of the dark. If we gotta live in the dark, we will live in the dark. When we see me dying in the light, we will live in the dark. You know the the lyrics are great, the melody's great, but boy, I just my ears are just on this first initial listen, mm -hmm. just drawing to Jeff Beck's guitar yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah, just the just the the touch and it, it's like you know artists like uh, Carlos Santana and stuff. There's certain guitarists that just have a certain feel that they do mm -hmm. that are so unique, and that's what you're getting here. It's just really 
you know, it's not about the speed, it's not about the, the notes per se, it's just everything about his approach to the instrument. It's just, and it just draws you in. I mean, I know we're both guitar players and stuff, but you just, it's just great to listen yeah. to him. Yeah, it's, it's just he's, great. He's just going, you know, yeah. nuts on this. Yeah. And his playing is amazing. There's an instrumental on this album here that it's the only track where he's the sole songwriter, uh -huh. where um, it is, it is, it is him on guitar. It is very metal, industrial. It is very. It is even kind of dubstep, mm -hmm. but it is completely unique and original. It's a tight instrumental, and it's just abs It's just mind blowing to hear. Wow! Can't and wait I didn't. To hear I didn't that. bring it on for uh -huh. this because I can't find an appropriate 25, 30 seconds that I can show. Okay, I see what and you're it's saying. Just, yeah. it's just, I'm sorry. No, it's just not possible yeah. to properly showcase it here. So people um, only need to hear the whole instrumental. Yeah, piece yeah. And go, go it. check yeah. it out. So. Yeah. At any rate, though, yeah, yeah, go check this one out. You know, uh, I highly recommend p picking up the physical CD. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, like I said, you can pick it up digitally or um, stream it on Spotify and Tidal yeah. and Apple Music. And, of course, uh, the Zombies one, of yeah. course, we can't seem to find that one yeah. digitally, so pick up the album. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think both these albums are just really good. Two artists that emerged in the mm -hmm. 60s and, and have had some serious staying power. And, and yeah, and I and I'm once again, because you, you talked about the last original album the Zombies did, and I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it's 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 relevant music. Yeah, and it is. It is. Same here. And, you know, here he's, of course, collaborating with some, some younger people. It's just relevant music, and the yeah. same thing with the, the Zombies' yeah. most recent release. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it is amazing, because there's not all that many artists that, that came of age in the 60s mm -hmm. who are still, you know, like the Zombies, like Jeff Beck, like Neil Young, mm -hmm. that are still really pushing the envelope for, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're still trying to do, you know, do really great songs mm -hmm. that are original and still try to push themselves and, and, and stuff. And very exciting to hear that. And I can't wait to hear the Jeff yeah. Beck album. Good. Definitely. Good. All right. Well, so we want to thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And, um, my name is TJR. You can check out my music at my website, tjrmusic.com. And, and of course, um, my, there's my own channel, which is youtube.com slash TJR, the original. And my name is Robert Kinsler, and you can read more of my uh, writings at ocregister.com, right here at musicworthbind.com, and at desertstarweekly.com. Okay. We'll see you soon. See you later, everybody. Bye. Thanks for coming in.